Hi, I'm Nick from SVS here with the legendary director of technology, Ed Mullen. How you doing, Ed? Good, Nick. Thanks. Awesome. We're going to talk today about a subject that I know is near and dear to your heart that you talk to uh, a lot, and uh, that's going dual, uh, which for those who don't know, it's uh, having two subwoofers in a room. Um, lots of benefits to it, and I think uh, people might learn a little bit by, uh, by understanding what exactly is happening in a room and why going dual is so great. So maybe you could kick that off. Right. Well, the obvious benefit to most enthusiasts is additional output capability. The two subwoofers can play louder than one, and that's important to some enthusiasts who are looking maybe to play their system at louder levels and action and sci-fi movies and get some additional slam impact and pressure. So that's kind of an obvious benefit. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, more subtle benefits is a smoother frequency response in room uh, that results in more accurate bass at more listening positions. So when you're talking about having two subwoofers in your room and each one having its unique frequency response, just how exactly is that playing out? And then by having two, what is it really fixing? Subwoofer one is going to have a unique frequency response in room and there's going to be direct and reflected bass waves in the room and they're going to create standing waves and there's going to be some, some peaks which is where the standing waves reinforce and there's going to be nulls where the standing waves cancel. So the frequency response is going to look kind of ragged in the room from one individual subwoofer. So when you talk about what you're actually hearing with a peak and a null, a peak it might be considered maybe like a like a boomy zone or, or what exactly do you hear? What makes you know it's a peak? Right, a bass peak would be kind of an exaggeration of the bass note. It might sound boomy or, or heavy or exaggerated at that point. And a null is a, is a cancellation or, or an absence of bass at that frequency. So it would sound weak in comparison. So uh, the frequency response uh, would not sound as accurate. So by having two subwoofers, you're, you're really smoothing that out. You're, you're taking those nulls and those peaks that may be in different seating areas, and you're really making it a, a more enveloping base. That's exactly it. Subwoofer one is going to have an uneven frequency response. Subwoofer two will have an uneven frequency response, but subwoofer one and two together will have a smoother frequency response at more locations in the room. Okay, so I know bass is supposed to be omnidirectional. It's supposed to be, uh, you're not supposed to be able to localize it, but maybe you can get a little bit more into why having dual subwoofers emphasizes that effect and, and what exactly is happening there. Sometimes you can tell where the subwoofer is in a room. If maybe it's near field placement at the side of the couch or maybe behind you, occasionally you'll be able to tell where the subwoofer is. With two subwoofers in the room, it's much harder to tell where the subs are located so the bass is more enveloping. So it's really a matter of, of, by having it on two separate locations in the room, you're taking away that ability to, to really pinpoint in your mind where the sound is coming from. And, and by that, it makes it just a more realistic, more convincing experience. That's exactly it. We call that localization or lack of localization. And you really want the loudspeakers to provide all the directional cues, not the subwoofer. Right. So now that you have your two subwoofers, placement, obviously a very important thing. What are some of the common places that people would set them up? And then what are the best for performance? The most common is both subwoofers in the front of the room, either flanking the center channel or to the outside corners. And the reason it's most common, it's the easiest to set up. It tends to look the best visually and the subwoofer cables are short runs. So that's, that's the most common setup. Okay, and in terms of when you're looking for just sheer performance and you really want to optimize the sound, what's your best bet there? The two locations for setup that actually measure the best are opposite diagonal, that would be one subwoofer, in, say, in the front left corner and one in the right rear corner, or one subwoofer front right corner, one subwoofer left rear corner. That tends to measure the best. Also, two subwoofers at the sides of the room measures very good too. Another sort of side benefit of having dual subwoofers is it's often when you have two smaller subwoofers much easier to place those within a room's aesthetics than having one large subwoofer. You get a little bit less footprint, uh, they can be a little easier to conceal, so I think you're, uh, you're looking at actually a fourth benefit there if you're thinking about placement in terms of the actual aesthetic in the room, um, you know, relative to, uh, to the subwoofers and, and everything else. Right, we call those lifestyle considerations, size, weight, footprint, visual impact, decor integration, traffic patterns, those are all issues that we have to deal with in real, real world applications and a really big subwoofer can sometimes stick out too far or have too much visual impact whereas two smaller subwoofers are easier to integrate into the room, less impact on traffic patterns and give you the, be the benefits of dual subs from an acoustic standpoint. So to recap what we discussed today, uh, benefits of going dual, obviously there's a lot of them. Uh, number one, just more dynamic output. Right. That's why we love subwoofers. Play them loud, play them low, 
get a lot of excitement. More slam impact and pressure from, from dual subs. Exactly. Second, you're getting smoother frequency response across the entire room. So when you're talking about multiple seats in a home theater, each one of those seats is gonna enjoy the same level of bass output without any of the peaks and nulls that, that can affect the experience. Right, you'll get better bass at more locations in the room instead of just at one sweet spot. So everybody can enjoy the experience instead of just one person. Gotcha. And third, we're talking decreased localization. So when you have two subwoofers in the room, it's really nearly impossible to find out where the bass is coming from because it just feels like it's all around you. Like that energy is just enveloping the room and you're just in the middle of the action. That's exactly it. And when you're talking about placement, two smaller subs, often a little easier to place within a room than one larger subwoofer, uh, which just allows you a little bit more flexibility with aesthetics and, and room styling um, in the sense of, uh, you know, having one large subwoofer, which, which can really sort of take over certain parts of a room. Right. So if you want more helpful information like this, optimization tips, visit our website, svsound.com. Go to the Sound Experts blog. If you have specific questions, don't hesitate to call our customer service team or email or chat in, and we can help you with system setup, optimization, subwoofer placement, base management, anything you want. Excellent. It'll be there. We'll see you.